Hey guys, welcome back to Jay's Yagi, where I share my journey, my experience, and story in audio. So today I'm gonna share with you my experience that I had with the Dynaudio Evoke 10 loudspeakers. And this is a pretty interesting one because this speaker has been out for a while now. Eh? It has. It's like the Snoop Dogg of audio. <laughs> Sounded better in my head, I swear. But point being, you get the point. It's a pretty old speaker. Uh, it's been out for a while, but maybe there's a reason they didn't discontinue it, right? Maybe it's still competitive. Maybe it's still relevant. Maybe it's still a good value at 1700 US dollars. Or is it? And that's kind of like the question I want to answer today because these speakers are at the right price point, right at the price point of one of my favorite speakers of all time, the Kef LS50 Meta speakers. And it's been a you know, reference for me for a long time, so why not compare it to a speaker like this? After hearing it for a while, I see why some people like the Dynaudio Evoque 10s while some people don't. And I'll show you a very interesting experience I had uh, where the speaker literally does a 180. Like it goes from one type of sound to another type of sound completely different and it's like kind of one of those rare instances where you change your amplifier or your gear and it goes, you know, it goes to a totally different sound to where it almost sounds like a totally different speaker. And that's a quite quite of a drastic change. So comparing it to the Kef LS50 Metas, we have to put it into context a little bit. The Kef LS50 Metas are a dual concentric design that is very well built and has very good imaging, very good face coherency, and it's one of the best sellers for Kef as far as I know. Dynaudio has a studio background, like they come from that studio thing. I mean, first thing I asked you, I was like, what do you know about Dynaudio? And the first thing you said was like, studio. I know them from like studio, their studio line, right? That's all, yeah, that's all I knew. And that's how I know, I learned to learn about Dynaudio too, because of my studio background. Uh, Dynaudio has always been that speaker that I know, like that has a studio sound and so on. And that's kind of what I expected of this speaker, but I have to tell you, I was wrong because this speaker has that warm, meaty, textured bass and that overall easy to listen to sound that I think a lot of people can appreciate. Now, I wouldn't say it's a speaker that I would be you know, owning for a long time, personally for me, because while I appreciate the long listening experience and that smoothness on the top end with no fatigue, that soft dome sound and really good texture in the bass, I still prefer my Kef LS50 Metas, at least for that kind of studio-ish sound because it's more flat, it's more balanced, and it gives me good face coherency and imaging that's more pinpoint. The Dynaudios don't exactly have that imaging capability or sound staging or uh, depth you know, perception as the Kef LS50 Metas do. But what do they what they do have again is that easy listening experience. And if that's what matters to you, musicality and non-fatigue listening experience, this is it. Now I'll share with you a very interesting story, right? Because I had a client once that came to me and this was the most unusual experience I've ever had because usually when people walk into the store, they play their music, they find a speaker they like and they walk out with it or they think about it, whatever. But this person came in and he was just sad. And I was like, what? Why is he sad? Why does he look so sad? Why is he expressing himself to be so sad? And he said, well, I've tried so many speakers, Jay, and I came here for advice and the speakers you're recommending me are just not it. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, but I just don't get it because the speakers I initially recommended to him was the Wilson Audio Sabrinas. And he was saying the bass is good, everything, but it's still bright. And I was like, oh, okay, he's the type of person who doesn't like bright sound whatsoever. So I said, okay, how about you try some Sonos Faber speakers? And you guys know, you guys know about Sonos Fabers. Sonos Faber is not bright. At least for me, it's, it has never been bright. But he listened to the Sonetto line and some of the Amal, uh, Sonos Faber Amalti as well. And he was like, still too bright. And I was like, what? And then we started going through some tracks and I was trying to understand where he's coming from. And the tracks I was playing him, he said, I'm not happy with those tracks. And I said, what do you mean? What do you usually play? And he recommended me a few tracks that I play to this day. So I guess there was something, you know, I gained out of it. it was the, uh, if you can't find any relation here, there was, was the uh, Holy Driver and by Dio and also Feels Good, Feels Bad Man. And if you find common grounds here, these are heavy metal tracks. And these are probably one of the most 
non-heavy metal track. That's a heavy metal track, if you know what I mean. So he played some really heavy metal stuff. And virtually every speaker he played, of course, ripped it to shreds, especially the higher he went, the more, you know, bright it became for him and it just ripped it to shreds. So he was looking for a speaker that was just smooth, that was rolled off. And he was telling me, you know, back when I had a speaker uh, and it had a soft dome tweeter, I don't know what it was, but it had a soft dome tweeter and it never got bright for me. I don't know what's with speakers these days, modern speakers suck. And I was like, you know what, I get you, I get you. Because the type of music he's playing requires a speaker perhaps like the Dynaudio Evoque 10s. Because I've played exactly those tracks, Holy Diver, Feels Good Man, and the metal tracks that I played, that he played at the time, played it on the speaker, didn't get bright. Played a lot of tracks and never got bright. So again, this speaker is a speaker that does not get bright. So if you're someone that likes that warm, even I would categorize it as a slightly darker sound, then yeah, this speaker is it. And Kefalos 50 Metas may be more accurate, may be more studio, but in terms of musicality, at least for that client and for people like him, the Dyna there's no beating the Dynaudios because it gives you a long listening experience and you hear everything without that fatigue, even with heavy metal, which is very impressive with the speaker. However, this is not true when you pair it up with Class D amplifiers. What I've said so far was my experience with tube amplifiers like the Light Magnetic or Class AB amplifiers like the Denifred Thalo. And I've tried other amplifiers like Class AB and tube amplifiers like the Wilson 10 300B and so on, but it never really changed the overall tonality. It still had that warmish, darkish tone. The only thing was that with tube amplifiers, it had a more wider sound stage and a deeper sound stage and more holographicness to it with a sacrificing a little bit of that imaging accuracy. But that's about it. But when you pair it with a Class D amplifier, like I paired it up with the NADC298, which is a purified module design, or I, I also paired it up with the Fear of 4 from Stark Sound, and also I tried it with the NADM10 version 2. And what these Class D amplifiers brought to the table for this speaker was that it made it just more balanced, it made it more sparkly on the top end. So that client that I was talking about, he would have not been happy with the, with the Dynaudio Evoque 10s if I paired it up with Class D amplifiers because of how, you know, it would, it would be too bright for him because the top frequency just became more brighter, more livelier, more engaging, more reference and more detail, more just just more in your face. And some people may like that and I, I just found it just way more closer to the Kef Us 50 Meta kind of sound. So now it was very comparable. Um, and imaging and all that stuff was still better on the Kef Us 50 Metas but the overall studio quality sound and the overall neutrality of it all was still kind of on the same level. So I would say if you're going for that studio sound and you're looking for a speaker that is more studio quality, I would still say the Kefalos 50 Meta is a more accurate speaker, is a more reference speaker in that regard, more balanced in terms of frequency response and you know, perception. But when it comes to musical enjoyment, if you're someone that likes a sound that is textured in the bass, you like to hear the textures in the bass and the nuance in the bass and the mid-range, you want it smooth with a little bit of, you know, vibrancy to it. And when I say vibrancy, I mean like presence because it's not too laid back. You know, it's often I hear speakers like this that's a little bit darkish, warmish sounding and it's just way too laid back, you know what I'm saying? But this speaker is intimate. Now the downside of that and th uh, something that I didn't like about this speaker is that it's too intimate for me. Like I like my soundstage to be wide and deep, as you guys know, this speaker is pretty limited to the plane of the speakers. So sound staging and imaging and stuff like that, the depth of the soundstage is pretty limited. And that was quite interesting because again, with speakers that are bookshelf speaker designs, stand mount designs, I usually get a wide soundstage and deep soundstage, which is what I like about stand mount speakers. But with a bookshelf stand mount speaker like the Dynaudio Evoque 10, is kind of like one of the rare cases where it was limited to the plane of the speakers. So if you like that intimacy, then sure. But for me, I didn't really uh, like that as much. 
However, one thing I really did like about this speaker and I emphasize one more time is how dynamic it is, how punchy it is, how textured the bass is. Like for a size of a speaker this small, you're sitting down, I'm sitting down listening to the speakers and it hits me at loud volumes, it hits me in the chest. Like I can feel the bass in the chest. I can rarely say that about stand mount speakers. I think the only speaker that I can say has that kind of bass response or bass presence or texture would be the Bacard S400 Mark II. But I would say that the Evoque 10s have a slightly more texture in the upper uh, mid, mid bass region. Meaning when you listen to tracks that have that kind of you know, bass or drum kick and stuff like that, you hear it more like you can feel, like not just hear it, but you can kind of imagine it and feel it. And there's texture to it. And I usually don't say this, but I would say the bass is detailed with the Dynaudio Evoque 10s more so you know, than the Kefalos of the Meadow. Now in terms of placement, when I pull them out of the room, like I'm talking about four or five feet, which is un unrealistic for most people, I got great imaging, great sound staging, great depth, but not extraordinary. Meaning, again, it was still limited to the somewhat the plane of the speakers. Now I just had a little bit more depth and breathing room and you know space between notes and so on. But when I put it towards the room, you know, more realistic setup around 1.5 feet away from the wall behind the speakers, I got a very good, like bombastic, you know, meaty bass. And I'm not talking about like overblown, you know, room gain or anything like that. I'm talking about just reinforcing the bass slightly and the bass was textured and nuanced and all that stuff. So if you like your bass and your texture, this speaker is really great. But I, at the same time, the depth was there and the sound staging was there, but again, still limiting uh, to the plane of the speakers. And now the depth was slightly less than when I had it four or five feet away from the wall, but not a bad compromise considering you know, that you had it so close to the wall, I thought the depth would just totally collapse. But no, I got a good sense of depth. It was not extraordinary, again, but a good sense. And what people will, you know, say perhaps realistic, because it's not so deep that it feels like you're so far away, but it felt more like literally the singer or the performer being right in front of me. A more intimate, private experience. So that's the experience I had with the speaker. Again, with the Capital 50 Metas, I did get more sense of depth, more sense of phase coherency, more pinpoint imaging. But again, it was more like reference with all the gear I've tried. And it definitely didn't sound the best with tube amplifiers. I prefer solid state amplifiers with the Capital 50 Metas. So two speakers that are very similar in usage, like both speakers I think can be passed in a studio setting maybe more so on the Kefil LS50 Meadows, but I just found the Dynaudio Evoque 10s to be a more flexible speaker, I should say, because you can pair it up with Class D amplifiers for a totally different sound signature than you know if you were to pair it up with Class AB or tube amplifiers. Whereas the Kefil LS50 Meadows, just a no, no for me for tube amplifiers, it just doesn't have the drive and the dynamics. But with Class AB and Class D amplifiers, it's pretty similar. It's a little bit more analytical with Class D amplifiers, but for the most part, it's pretty darn similar. So if you're a fan of bass, if you're a fan of some something that's you know rolled off and something that is easy to listen to for long periods of time, and you enjoy that mid-range and bass texture and nuance, then I think the Evoke 10 wins there. But again, if you're after that reference sound, flat, you know, just pretty good detail and imaging and face coherency and all that, more studio quality, I think the Kefil S50 Meta takes the cake there. So two very different speakers, but I found that the Evoque 10s was interesting because I had a totally 180 experience depending on the amplifiers I paired it up with. So I see the merit in the speaker and is it worth it for $1,700 today? My answer would be if you like the Dynaudio sound that I just described, then yeah, there's not many speakers out there that does what these do with that easy to listen you know, experience. Even Sonos Fibers, while they're warmish, they still have that brightness, you know, tingle for some people like my client who plays metal and bright tracks. So if you play poor recordings or metal tracks or something that is not just perfect, but you want to hear it for long periods of time, even jazz or whatnot, this speaker will do it. And I think that is the selling point with a speaker. And I think I enjoyed my time with it. And uh, it's definitely not a showroom sound, meaning you won't 
I ran out of coffee, dude. Oh no. Well, this review is going to be concluded very soon. But anyways, the point being is that it's a very easy to listen to sound. It's not a showroom sound. It's not going to wow you right off the bat. But it's a speaker that will be enjoyed by people with a certain type of preference, like I just said. So I'm, on, I'm out of coffee. I could go for longer, but um, make sure to like this video if it was helpful to you. And make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one. And I go get some more coffee. Peace.